America finding its way. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Tick Tech on a given Thursday morning. And today it's uh, Stephanie Dalton and me. Alone at last, Stephanie. <laughs> at last. <laughs> what an opportunity. <laughs> we're going to talk about lies, lies, damned lies. Um, we're going to talk about, you know, how we in our lives have seen lies and we have learned about lies and where they fit in the human condition, or at least in America and in government. But we're in a time now where it's, it's different somehow. And I, I wanted to examine that with you because, you know, we saw Trump uh, lying uh, right through his four years about everything. Um, and and uh, we saw people believing those lies. That, that was interesting. And then we found out, uh, you know, on an investigation by the press and otherwise, that he'd been lying right through his business career beforehand. He's lied throughout his life. Um, and I guess that's, that's, his, that's his training. I mean, he, he lied about bone spurs going way back when. Um, and so the question is, you know, has lying become more popular, more effective? You know, I mean, just uh, looked it up on, on uh, uh, Google and uh, apparently, uh, a New York court suspended Ru Rudy Giuliani's law license uh, for lying. You know, that's that's comforting. Um, and, and, but should it be in the courts only? Should it be on on a motion made and proved in court, um, or should or should we try to look back to a time when people weren't lying so much, and it wasn't so ubiquitous in government? Do you join me? Do you do you agree with me that lying has become more popular, it seems like, in our lifetime, Stephanie? I do agree with you very much, Jay. It's mendacity. We are in a mendacious era, and it's accepted. And how this uh, has come to be is probably something we can talk about, and we probably know quite a few points to bring up in regard to how we're in a mendacious uh, era. Why, why do people lie? Um, one one uh, issue regarding that is the integrity issue. Uh, I think that uh, we're not doing enough to, um, to value um, the integrity. I mean, isn't this what... Uh, we used to revere the Thomas More for what wasn't there even a Broadway play about Thomas More and uh, you know the, and these and the the people that have died uh, in, instead of being willing to lie. So we have come a long way down the ladder um, from the time of uh, an integrity that that was engulfing of one's life and 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 a totem for the person's life. I think a couple of factors we should throw in the, you know, in the soup here. N number one is um, I think people lie because they get an advantage out of it. There's a benefit um, or there's a, a fear uh, and that they will avoid a detriment. Either way, um, they lie. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's a, it's a kind of deception where they want other people to rely. This is like fraud. This is the definition of fraud I'm giving you. You lie to somebody in order to deceive them um, and have them act in reliance. That's an essential element of fraud lies. Um, and, um, you know, it's to your benefit and their detriment that they relied on your lie. And um, I think I think in, in this country anyway, we have more of that. Uh, let, let me add some other thoughts. And that is, um, you know, you look at our lifetimes, Stephanie. And look, look at the ads, look at the ads on television. We're barraged with ads. And I've, I've come to feel that, um, you know, uh, a lot of that is not true. A lot of that is either direct or indirect, you know, subtle um, or express lies. And uh, it affects our lives. And we know at some fundamental level, we know sitting there watching that ad or reading that ad, that is not true. Um, and we accept that and we say to ourselves, well, I guess that's the way it is. You want to sell something and have people buy your product, rely on your deception. Um, you can get away with it. You can do that because everybody does. And, I, you know, it's very troubling that 
you know, their, their fathers and mothers never taught them, really taught them the basic rule, don't, don't lie. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's a tipping point, I think, you know, is if you had one person violating that, it's one thing, there's 330 million of us, but if you had, you know, 70 or 80 million lying, that would be past the tipping point. And so it's a question of how the society is operating uh, do more people accept lies these days? Do more people lie and do more people accept lies? Are we swimming in a, in a, in a soup of lies, a broth, uh, you know, an evil broth where everybody is, um, um, accepts it and engages uh, in it? And, I, you know, I would suggest to you that uh, in many ways, Madison Avenue has encouraged us to be there. And I also suggest to you that, you know, the old, the old rule about how people believed the written word more than they did the spoken word. Ergo, the statute of frauds. Ergo, the idea that um, if you put it in writing, it's going to be more credible. Well, it isn't necessarily so. And if you say that that follows like Facebook and, um, you know, social media in general, um, because it's in writing, maybe it's more believable. Um, you know, I'm not sure where that fits. I, I, don't, I don't think you can believe a lot of what is coming at us these days. We're swimming in a world of lies. What do you think? I, I certainly think you're onto, uh, onto it and explaining it and, and, and stimulating me to think of even more, more modeling of it by the corporate world. I think all of us mostly alive today have come up under the corporations presenting lies and making um, cases for their lies and, and litigating their lies. And of course, of course, it would be the smoking lie. The tobacco didn't have anything to do with causing uh, disease in after extended use that they, they lied. And, and we have television footage of them lying before Congress in committee meetings where, where they were investigated for this. So, I, and they're not the only corporations that, that perform this huge lie and actually cost many, many lives. So we have that in the recent past. And then if we go back further, we have many other conditions of, of untruths told and people doing things for, reasons that were self-serving and not serving the public that are keeping people from getting their vaccines now because of the, the, the drastic mistakes that were, were, were made again by some corporations, by even the medical profession, you know, luring people into experiments uh, when it wasn't in their best interest to be there and, um, and, and they were really taken advantage of and lied to and had no idea what was happening to them. So we, so if we stop and think about it, yeah, <laughs> we're swimming in a pool of lies. I mean, having a, a integrity, bringing integrity back is going to take a lot of work because you kind of have to have some blinders on and you certainly have to have some critical thinking to bring to getting through this life and following a path that might be evidence-based and be in your best interest and um and certainly not be that way without a lot of checking and, and research. We can't count on the truth being given to us and ever, or, or the best effort to give us the truth. It's, it, it's not there anymore. It's not there. Yeah. It's, it, that, even then we could bring up the church if we want to go see something really dark. I mean, that that is really another huge example of a major organization. I mean, it's the oldest organization, 2000 years of church. And it turns out that they they were lying and covering up the worst evil possible. So I think uh, your description of us being in a soup of mendacity is right on. We have to figure this out. Yeah, and I would extend, I mean, there's a lot of what you say, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, uh, speaking of uh, covering up, you know, covering up is a lie too, isn't it? When something needs to be told and you don't tell it, uh, by implication, you are saying it didn't happen. And it did happen. 
So you're making a lie. You're stating something directly or implicitly um, that isn't true. And, and I think um, we have to watch out for that just as much. Uh, that's why the press is so important. You know, the press doesn't do it perfectly, but the press is supposed to tell us the truth, not tell us untruths, and also not cover up anything. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, query whether the press is doing its job in the face of government leaders, and leaders, the operative word there, however they got to be leaders, in the face of leaders who would lie. It's a little uh, whack-a-mole game, you know, one pops up here, one pops up there. It's a full-time job finding all the lies and uh, dismissing them. And, you know, then you have a system which doesn't necessarily help you do that. If you, may, if you call a lie out, you might be subject to some kind of lawsuit about it, which Trump does. Um, so it's like uh, creating confusion about the facts. You know, I've been watching a, um, a series uh, called the, the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Fasc it fascinates me because it's the story of a, of a once great empire which had all the right sensibilities and understood, you know, how to, how to govern its people. It was really up to that point in time, the best thing that ever happened. But then it began to unravel. And uh, of course, uh, you know, it's, it's fictionalized in many ways and it's acted. But I think one of the, the, the teaching points in that, in looking at the Roman Empire, is that they, they began to have conspiracies. They began to lie um, to each other and deceive each other. And, and, I, and I say to you, um, remember the Ides of March. Remember how they went after Julius Caesar? That was a conspiracy. They didn't tell him. They didn't face up to him. Um, and, and then you saw the empire unravel. Maybe he was part of it, but the whole culture had gone out the window. Um, and it wasn't too long before there was no Roman Empire. And query whether there's a correlation between the lying we see and which is accepted by millions of people against their own interest, as you mentioned, um, you know, with the, the fall of the American empire. I mean, I don't, I don't think this is a drill. I think this is real. And I think we have to study it and talk about it and find solutions. It's one thing for the court in New York to suspend Rudy Giuliani's law license He's not really practicing law anyway, for lying on behalf of Trump. But but query is that way you is that way you find consequences in the courts if you lie quote under oath end quote does that make it a greater lie um, than not under oath and are people really taking oaths these days and abiding by them we we have um, one hundred and forty seven. Um, legislators who voted against confirming the election on January 6th. Um, they knew damn well that uh, Biden won the election, but they, they lied in public on behalf of their constituents. Um, you know, that is really shocking. They were lying to us. They were lying and violating their oaths. What's the remedy? You're going to take them to that same court? Is that court going to do anything? Can you sue them for a violation of their oath to do the right thing, to not lie? Is the president obligated not to lie? And suppose he does. You know, most people would say, well, you vote him out of office. Is it that simple? I, I agree. I think it is not that simple. And uh, we do need uh, to bring uh, integrity back into these roles that are of of our leaders and it's certainly long gone and uh we're going to have to um deal with um the the fact that this model of lying um you know something is going to have to happen i think to put um the meaning of uh the previous president in into the perspective of of what the, the the morality of what he did and what and and how those those ways of uh, dealing with the public and communicating with the public are are not okay. 
I mean, so so we probably do need to rethink a, a lot lot of what we have depended on the norms and the the structures that we've worked within that are based on belief in integrity and truth in so far as you know it. Um, and we're going to have to rebuild because what is an oath? And and it's on a Bible. And is and is that something that is making any difference to anybody? So I, we're, we're kind of in one of those transition places. We're having been kicked into facing what it is that actually we're doing in the way of, of uh, lying or um, being um, not having integrity um, as a high, high value, which was a basis for the development of this country. We, we've got to rethink all of this. I think it will, it will take time, but we are going to be going through a, a process of redefining how we get things done that are, are going to benefit everyone and not be power plays and not be, you know, mendacious efforts to self-serve. And how are we going to do that? I mean, it's a bit really huge question for the democracy, right? Because we're still going to have the corporations and they're still going to run their advertisements and they're still going to make the best cases and do the commission omission thing, which is maybe not lie in the way of committing the lie, but by omitting something, they are still in the lie, which you brought up earlier, which is another dimension of this. So it looks like um, it's not just civics that we need to have in our schools. We also need to be talking about how we how we value this and the integrity of a person and how important that is for their character and their stay on earth and well you know it's a question so kellyanne conway back in before the election you know she was uh, a part of trump's uh, election campaign um <clears throat> lied you know and i i watched that i said you know gee my, my neck is bristling on this she's lying in public and uh, getting away with it and doubling down. That's one of Trump's tricks. You not only lie, you repeat the lie. That's what Adolf Hitler did. That was one of his techniques. You lie, repeat the lie, and after a while it becomes common knowledge, but it's a lie. And that's what she was doing. And then, you know, finally she justified that with this thing about alt facts, which is, you know, actually just between us, that's ridiculous. That's just another fantastic, a lie is what it is, all facts. that are, There are, is a set of all facts that you can accept. Anyway, I said to myself, gee, what kind of people is he surrounding himself with? This is outrageous. And the press called him on it, and they called her on it. But, you know, this is one of the problems. What can the press do but observe and opine? But the press can't stop him. The press can make, maybe make fun of him, but it can't stop him. Um, and just a, a just one digression, you know. Last night on Rachel Maddow, there was something that actually blew your mind. Hmm. The, 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 the fellow's name is Manuel um, Oliver. He's a Hispanic. Lives in Florida. Uh, his son was killed in the Parkland shooting. Seventeen years old. A sweet kid. Emmanuel and his wife took it upon themselves to do stuff, even though Congress would not, has not, and probably will not do anything about this. So what they did is they created a fictitious academy, uh, a resident in the state of Nevada. And they hired a great big field in the middle it was, I think it was the same field where that shooting took place in Las Vegas a few years ago. Remember that? And in the field, they built a, a large, yeah, it's an amazing story, a large theater-like platform, okay? And they put 3,000 of and 44 white graduation chairs out there, neatly organized in front of this theatrical platform. They invited a couple of guys from the NRA who were spokesmen for the NRA. And they told, they told these guys that um, this was the graduating ceremony of, of the James Madison Academy, which was fictitious. They created a fictitious website, the whole, the whole nine yards. 
And would they please come down and present, uh, you know, the graduating, the graduating class with, um, you know, their advice, and whatnot. And one of them, whose name was Lot, came down and, and, and he, 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 he saw these 3,000 chairs in front of him and said, what's this? He says, well, you know, just rehearsing. And they had cameras and they had a, a lot of drones out there taking pictures of the chairs. And this one solitary figure giving a graduation address. And he talked about guns and how important they were and everybody should have more guns and more AK-15s and, and uh, preserve and protect the Second Amendment and, uh, and, and shout down anybody who opposed the Second Amendment. And he went on and on in this, in this speech. Um, what they didn't tell him was that, that this was not a real academy. This was not a graduation. There were no graduates. And the 3,044 chairs represented the 3,044 kids who have been killed this year, 2021, uh, by gun violence in this country. And he gave the speech to an empty, huge crowd of chairs, and they filmed it. Uh, and it is a very, very powerful film. This only happened recently, last couple of days. Um, and so I'm sure it'll be in the media soon. But the remarkable thing about it uh, is that they use this creative technique to embarrass the NRA, to make them look like fools. And they did like make them look like fools. Uh, it, was, it was brilliant. And I say to myself, maybe there's power in that. That's beyond just reporting what happened at Parkland. That is revealing the people who caused Parkland. I just thought it was stunning. I'm so glad you brought it up. It, it's, it, it was remarkably impressive and poignant and dramatic. And, uh, it, and, and, and it really put you into reflection about the loss, the degree of the loss of these thousands of youngsters who would have been graduating in this class. So this is the, the missing class of 2021, that, that the, this, this ploy uh, of graduation speech practice, you know, brought these, these men or this man into to give that outrageous speech with those statements, as you said, um, that they would surely call out anyone rising against gun ownership or getting in the way of the expansion of the Second Amendment. Uh, but it, it really was a stunning uh, presentation. Um, and it was, uh, um, and, and it also, well, it brings up the mentacity issue too, because these this man was set up, but he didn't do diligence with looking up the school and uh, he could have gone to the website and found out that it was a very shallow website. He could have found out that there was was no such academy if if anybody had done his due diligence or if he had done it himself. So they kind of brought it on themselves. But that that uh, presentation was very moving, and I I hope that it's going to be shown far and wide because it says everything that needs yeah. to be said. So you know, and I remember the Lincoln Project. Uh, you know, from the election, I, I thought they're. Their ads, they're calling out Trump on various things. That was also good and healthy. That's what we need. If people are going to, like Giuliani, I mean, he has, you know, he was involved in this crazy Sasha Baron Cohen movie uh, where he was set up and this, this woman, I don't know if you saw that. It was, it was gross. They were involved in a sexual act and there was uh, hidden cameras and Giuliani denied it all. He said he was just fixing his fly. Um, and, you know, people accepted that. I wouldn't have accepted that. So, I mean, what, what you have is, is lying going on and, and you have this kind of tension, this spiraling tension of lies versus reveal versus more lies doubling down. And it's just so far away from the mm -hmm. actual truth. Mm -hmm. uh, and Trump is a, is a master at this sort of thing. And the question I put to you, we don't have that much time left, but the question I put to you is, can we have this broth of lies and a democracy? Doesn't a democracy require truth? Well, or that's what the Greeks thought and, and the Romans when they got started until they got into power and power 
corrupts, of course, as absolute power corrupts. It does so very rapidly. But I think that um, we have got to confront truth. We have to do things that confront when it isn't true. And I think there's been a reluctance to do that because the truth will out, right? Isn't that a meme? We say that the truth. Will, no, it won't. It, it has to be protected and it has to be reminded. It has to be delivered. It has to be framed. And we have to do things to make sure we know that we're going in the direction of getting to that truth. Of course, we'll never get to the platonic ideal of truth, but we're going to be on that track. How do we get on that track? To, on the track of the know, well, do we have time? Do we have time, Stephanie? Because yeah. w while these lies are being bandied about, we still see the Republicans do this every day. Incredible, you know, that they deny January 6th. Yeah. They come up with this, this, uh, this idea that the FBI organized the insurrection. It's, you know, it's just a huge false conspiracy. QAnon lies, all about lies. It's all about distracting us with lies, even though, you know, if we had applied, as you said, critical thinking, we wouldn't do that. If we had even looked at it from the point of view of our self-interest, um, I mean, our true self-interest. I mean, I, I'm thinking of Jonestown. Those people drank the Kool-Aid. They drank the Kool-Aid and it killed them. Yeah. And they probably knew there was something phony fishy about that. But they did it anyway, even at the expense of their lives. And so, you know, they don't want to take uh, vaccines with the Delta variant and other variants that are going to emerge from all these cases. Um, that's that's suicidal. And yet, without critical thinking, they accept Trump's notion that you don't have to take the vaccine. Vaccine. It's a political statement. Whatever he's selling out there. Bottom line is, um, do we have time? Do we have time to fix this? before it undermines our entire society and certainly our government, the management of our country. Well, I think that uh, Rachel got at something early on when, when uh, Mitch McConnell said that he was gonna do nothing and he was gonna ask his, his Senate to do nothing to promote or advance or respond to this administration's efforts. It was all to be ignored. We were to do a nothing burger for the entire four years. And I believe that that, she she praised that because she said, I'm glad you told us because now nobody has to work that hard and work around all of this and spend all this time. Let's just get on with now we know where you are. So what I'm thinking is that with all of this lying and pushing things around in untruth, maybe we're getting closer to saying exactly what it is that's that we want to do. Because you're going to move to do things. You're going to do things to get what you want. And if the what you want is more uh, revealed, is more clear, is made open, maybe we could bypass the lying. Just get right down to this is what I want. And I'm going to do everything I can do to get that to happen as Mitch McConnell is doing now. So no games, no shades, no stories. It's this is what I want to do. And uh and then people um, are going to lie to get what they want. So why not? Let's just go get what we want and and get it a little further down uh, in the in the visible range of human. All that considered, Stephanie, how are we going to do on the 2022 elections? Because there's a lot of people still buy the lies. They accept the lies, even though the lies are for many of them are suicidal. Um, they accept the lies and they're going to run on that. Um, and they're going to double down on that. Josh Hawley is a perfect example. You know that he understands these things are not true, and yet he espouses them anyway. Um, and there are voters out there that will buy that. People will buy anything. You know, it's the theory of demagoguery and Huey Long in Louisiana. It's a theory that you, know, you can fool most of the people most of the time. But somewhere along the line, and this is I'm tripping off what you were saying, somewhere along the line, maybe, just maybe, they wake up maybe just maybe um they say wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute this is not true we can't go on doing this it is undermining our society the question is whether we all of us have the time before we really go down like the roman empire well that's true but i think again there it's what do these people want and if we get off the the platonic ideals and the abstract notions of integrity and truth and all these things and get down to what is it that you want and how do you and how are you going to get there 
And um, that seems to be uh, the question I have now is like these people that are doing these things and, and Holly, why is, why, what do you want, Holly? You think this is going to make things better for you? You want to go somewhere to get something needs to be more outspoken. Uh, and, and, and so that lying is not the lever that's going to get you there. What's going to get you there is being open about what you want. And anyway, it's getting more to that because people are not afraid to lie anymore. So they're not trying to cover that up. So maybe we are unwrapping, you know, a lot of these uh, aims and goals that ordinarily were unspoken because they're so unattractive. And yeah. uh, well, I hear inherent in what you're saying uh, a uh, an expression of what I call the the fatigue theory. <clears throat> um, the fatigue theory is my theory about the stock market. The stock market goes up until it gets tired of going up, and then it goes down, and then it's in the pits. And it stays there until it gets tired of being there, and then it starts going up. So maybe, just maybe, you know, in the weird, you know, the evaluation of the species, the fatigue theory will come into play here. People will really get bloody tired of all of this soup of lies all around them and say, wait a minute, you know, maybe we have to return to some other better time. Um, what, what we learned, um, you know, in school and our parents taught us what we read in the good books. Um, maybe we should stop doing this and, and recreate America. But again, is there time? Well, there's all the time in the world. Yeah. yeah. We just... Day. So I I, th I think, yeah, the time is there to do it one way or the other. Um, I, I think we will work our way out of this. I think we've been in a period of, of pressure on, on doing things in a manner that nobody ever valued, but had to come to value to be able to get what they wanted or what they think they wanted to have and we're gonna get. And I don't think they got it and they may not realize yet that they didn't get it and can't get it that way. But we need to work on what's really happening like that. Maybe get other work at that level instead of being so abstract about how we have to do these things in a in a bigger sense. You know, let's yeah. get people need and want and make that more reasonably um, reasonable yeah. achieving. And we got to recognize it. We got to call it out, and we certainly can't afford to have leaders that lie to us. We can't afford that. It's not a matter of, um, you know, just voting for or against them. It's a matter of calling them out every single time, every single time, never letting them get away with lying to us. Anyway, I think uh, speaking of time, we're out of time, Stephanie. Uh, thank you very much. You want to you take a whack at a last comment, what we'd like to leave people with here about their participation in the democracy? I think we've all been very affected by uh, this past president and about the mendacity that he has popularized to the point where when they came out at the National or Naval or Medical Center in Bethesda, where Trump went for his treatment when he supposedly had the COVID, there, there was a raft of doctors in white coats that came out and stood in a in, a, in an organized group and talked about how he had COVID. And I was so used to things being lies that I didn't believe that these people in white coats standing in front of the gorgeous building of the medical center out there in Bethesda, and I succumb to it too. So we're we're all easily um, taken in by by these kinds of repetitions and and just being being uh, battered by this for years on end. And we do need to rethink it. And I think we will. I think Americans will. We'll okay. Win. Well, we're fighting a very difficult kind of virus there. Because yeah. the, the leaders who lie spread the lies like a virus. And uh, even those doctors, you know, there's been plenty of press about how they didn't tell the truth either about his condition. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're, if you're around a person like that, you have to be especially careful to deal with the lies that come out of him. Anyway, okay, there's more to come on this, but I thought I'd raise it with you and uh, see how we felt about it and uh, make, make some analysis on a psychological, sociological basis. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Yeah, very interesting. Aloha.